Alrighty guys, so today I'm talking about the food tab and the items within it. I'm just going to go through every item here and talk about what's worth using, what's not worth using, what circumstances you want to use items for, and things along those lines. So first off, we have the basic farm. There's not even an argument to be made for these. They're realistically more expensive or similarly expensive to the improved farm version because you can get rocks faster than you can logs. And improved farms are just a straight upgrade over them because they grow f seeds faster. So what these do is you plant a seed in and eventually out will pop a vegetable in a couple of days not worth using under any circumstance, don't build them. Next up is the improved farm. This is basically just the straight upgrade over the basic farm. You plant a seed in and out will pop a vegetable. If you get a vegetable that you like, say for instance a dragon fruit, you can go ahead and feed it to your little bird friend like I have in the cage up there from the structures tab. You just gotta capture a bird and shove him in there and then you can feed it to them and they will give you a couple extra seeds and a couple of the seed type you want. Thing is with that, they don't really give you very many, so you have to cycle through a lot of vegetables to get enough seeds to replant the same type of thing. So that's a huge pain. Basically, the only reason that you would want to build one of these is because you need corn to build a powder cake. Powder cake is a weird item used for some weird things that most players don't use ever. It's It rots after, I think it's 10,000 days, to a point where you wouldn't ever see it rot in a normal game and you use that to build certain farms. For instance, you could put it behind fence and put some bushes next to it so that gobblers, whenever they pop out of a bush, will go straight over to it and they'll just sit next to it and you can kill them. So that is always an option there. But otherwise, you really don't wanna build these. They're not good for generating hunger or HP. The reason that is, is because there's just better options. It's not that they're necessarily the worst option, it's just there's better options out there. For instance, for hunger, you can legitimately just build a berry farm. Like I said before, if you were to just put a piece of food in the middle of some fence next to it, that generate you a lot of meat and a lot of berries. You can use that to make meatballs and that will get your hunger needs dealt with. You could do that with, say for instance, about 15 berries is gonna cover one person just permanently. So don't really worry about hunger all too much. Now, health on the other hand is a little bit different, which is what people normally are going to build these for because they want dragon fruit pies. Now, the simple solution for that is you've got a base in a desert to start off with here, but all you need is you need two cactus and two monster meat like I have in my inventory, and then you're gonna need a crock pot like this and a crow. So cactus you can get for, it takes one HP away from you if you're wearing armor when you pick it and it regrows in every season and it counts as a vegetable in the crock pot. Now this monster meat counts as a meat, this egg counts as an egg, and then I put these in here and that is going to give me 40 HP back and a decent amount of hunger, just about 40 on that end and also five sanity back. And we'll talk about crock pots a little bit later, but that covers basically why the farms, they're really just not worth using, except for if you're going for that corn. Now, next up we have the bucket of poop. So, this thing's whole purpose is, you use three manure to get 10 uses worth, so you're getting a lot more use out of each manure, but it takes some logs and it takes some bone shards, which takes some time to collect. Is it worth using ever? No. Don't build it, I don't see any point. The best way to gather fertilizer is simply to go into your caves and gather, say for instance, 80 to 120 light bulbs. They'll grow in patches of three in just a single plant sometimes, and they all grow together in the muddy biome. And you can just grab a whole bunch of them and then just let them rot. And then you use that to fertilize your plants. Another option is you could just let berries rot and then use them to fulfill their own needs along that end. But basically just don't build this. It's not worth building even if you are using manure to fertilize your plants. Just gather more manure instead. Next up we have the mushroom planter, which on paper seems amazing, but it's not so great. So it takes eight rot, five manure, and two living logs to build. And what it does is you put a mushroom in, and then in a couple of days it'll pop out some more mushrooms which sounds great, but first off, taking living logs to build something is really expensive. It's a very high tier magic item that's not easy to come by, and it's also used in making the best weapon in the game, the dark sword, which is, you know, you're gonna use a lot of them. So now, 
if it was a permanent structure that you didn't have to refuel, it would be great. I would say it's great. But the issue is, after a couple of uses, you have to reuse a living log on it to refuel it so that it can grow more mushrooms. So overall, it's just not worth it. Even if you have a character like Wormwood on your team who can gather some living logs for you really easily with his ability, I mean, you're better off doing other things. Next up, we have the bee box. Now, if you are too afraid to go to the ruins, this is really your next best food option in the entire game for late game. The ruins has a specific plant called lichen. It's a blue little thing growing out of the ground that you can just shove in your mouth. It's the exact same as a carrot, except there's hundreds of them, and it hurts your sanity when you eat it. And the issue with it normally is that it spoils really fast. But the bee queen drops an item that makes it so that food never spoils while within it called the bundling wrap. So that's really kind of a game breaking thing. But the bee boxes, they just take a lot of resources to build. That's really their, their big downside. And they'll gather honey for you if they have flowers next to them. So some bees will pop out and then when they go back in after touching some flowers, they'll put some honey in the box and you can just come over here, grab it, and then you can go ahead and run off as some of the bees come after you to try and attack you. But that honey is really good food. It lasts basically forever. You're just going to be able to eat it whenever you want. You could gather a whole bunch before winter and it'd still be good by the end of winter as long as you were using it in an ice box. So it's great for that. And it also doesn't take very much time to collect it. The only reason why it's not the best food source in the game is once again because of that very weird item in the ruins I was talking about called lichen. Wickerbottom can go in there with a lure plant and gather thousands of it within a minute and that will cover your food for years on end with bundling wraps which is really broken and OP. And the thing is with that is that the bundling wraps also take honeycombs to make. So if you're doing that strategy you don't want to build bee boxes then. So just keep that in mind if you're going to do these. Now, the next one is the drying rack here. Now, I wouldn't recommend to build these until you're into your second year because they are kind of expensive for what they do. But they cost three twigs, two charcoal, and they cost three ropes, so you could look at that as nine grass instead. And what they do is you will put a piece of meat on them, and it'll take a day or two to come back and be turned into a piece of jerky, which is basically just a piece of meat with way, way better stats. So say for instance, I put a big meat on there, it's going to heal me a whole bunch too, it's going to give me a good amount of hunger, and it's actually going to restore my sanity a lot. Now, the issue with these is how many of them you need to actually fulfill your hunger needs. It takes so many of them to actually cover all of the meat that you use. And with how long it takes to build them, you really want to wait until your second in-game year. So after you've made it past that first summer, then you can really start worrying about these. Now, the reason why I say that is, especially as someone who goes and plays in a style that stays very insane all the time because there are magic items that you want nightmare fuel for. This is best for characters such as WX-78, Wolfgang, Wartox, really the power classes as you would call them. That strategy is. With that, you don't really want to eat the jerky in many circumstances. There are a couple of them, say for instance when you're fighting a boss when you wouldn't want to be insane. But it can be kind of a nuisance as just a general food source and it takes a lot of time to put into these. Now, with that, they are still absurdly useful if you can get them because you can use all of those foods in the crock pot and jerky lasts so long. So it basically just is a great way to preserve your food if you're a top tier player. Now, next one is my personal favorite out of every single item in here. If I wasn't allowed to have any other item in here and had to choose just one, it would be the crock pot. Now the crock pot is a great item. You saw me use it earlier. You just put four food items in and then if you put in the correct ones in the correct order for a certain recipe, it'll pop out a food item that's really strong. As you saw earlier, one of my favorites is two cactus and then two cooked monster meat. Then I give one of those cooked monster meat to the bird to get an egg, and then I throw all of that in the crock pot. So one egg, one cooked monster meat, two cactus, heals 40 HP, bunch of hunger. Now, another good one for those of you who are struggling to survive winter is just one monster meat in the crock pot. So you can get that from say, killing a spider if you're having trouble finding some monster meat or really any meat can go there. It could be a morsel, it could be a big meat, whatever you wanna do there. 
and then there's three ice from mining glaciers. And that is really the easiest way to cover your hunger during winter because a lot of the food sources dry up. And I know that takes a lot of time away from new players. So keep that in mind. Just one monster meat, three ice, gets a 62.5 hunger from building meatballs. Great recipe there. These crock pots, you really want to build a lot of them because they will take some time to cook your food and you don't want to just sit around and just wait for your food when you need it. You just want to throw a whole bunch of recipes in all at once and then you just want to leave because otherwise you're just wasting time on them when you could be gathering more food. I mean, who'd be up for that? Now, the last one, this is another personal favorite of mine, the ice box. So the ice box makes food spoil twice as slow. So it takes twice as long for food to spoil as it would normally. Now, it also does not even cost very much. So you can understand how strong that is if you've ever run into food getting, you know, stale, it's getting kind of rotten, it actually turns into rot. You kind of don't want that with your really good things. So you can just plop this guy down. You'll want to plop it down next to your ice boxes somewhere, uh, next to your crock pot somewhere, I mean. So you just put it down, say, I could put it down right here. I throw some food in here, and I open this up, and I put it in the same way. And great, then I can cook some things right out of there, and it really improves my efficiency there. So with that, you do need a gear, two gold, and a cut stone to build it. Normally the hardest one for a newer player to gather here is the gear. So the gear is from Clockworks. So you'll see them around if you really explore throughout the entire world. They'll spawn on an odd patch of land and they're just these robot guys. So, and then you gotta fight them. They have quite a bit of health. What you can do if you're not really comfortable with combat or don't have much gear to kill them at the moment is you could lure them into another enemy. Say for instance, if they spawned in a swamp, you wanna lure them into a tentacle. You can also get them to fight each other if one of them is a clockwork rook, as a rook will charge into other clockworks if you bait them right. So. This overall, not a super hard piece of equipment to gather, and you don't really need all that many of them. Really, one or two will cover you throughout your entire game if you use them effectively. If you're building, like, say, for instance, a mega base, you may want more, but until then, you're perfectly fine. Some other ways of gathering that gear if you're having trouble with clockworks are uh, the ruins always has gears, whole bunch there. That's the hardest area in the game, but I always recommend that for players who are more advanced, they go ahead and rush the ruins immediately as the game starts because there's a lot of good gear there. You can also get it from digging up graves or gathering tumbleweeds in the dragonfly desert. So all those are options there that you can do to get this ice box. And it's really a good item that you want to have to keep those items that spoil fast to spoil a little bit slower. Now we have the salt box. The salt box is very similar to the ice box, except there's only certain food items you can put in it. Say for instance, I can't put crock pot recipes in it. Now, the reason why you would want this is because certain uncooked foods you can just throw in there that have a cooked version and they'll take a lot longer to spoil than they even would with the ice box. I believe it's five times slower, but this is not worth building under any circumstance. The reason that is, is because it just takes too long to gather the materials for it. The salt crystals, you have to go out to the ocean to go gather. So you'd have to go through that whole tech tree to get there, which is this tech tree right here. That's not gonna be a fun time to go do. It takes a lot of time off your hands. It would be significantly easier to just go kill the bee queen, which is quite a hard boss, I've got to say, but it's just going to be straight up easier overall. And then that gives you the bundling wrap item, which makes it so food just doesn't perish at all and really covers your needs on this end. And it's too specific an item for you to really want to go out and get it. With it not being able to hold crockpot food, like what am I even going to use it for? I want to keep my food in crockpot food, that way I can eat them. And that is it for the food tab. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like or subscribe. If you leave a like, I'll send a real life ice box to your house made out of your murdered clockwork enemies. 100% no scam for real. 100%. Alrighty, that's it for today guys. Bye bye.